<laughs> well, it was funny because it took 18 months to get the security clearance to get in. Of course. <laughs> so, right. so there was that. Prior to that, I was, you know, I did a bunch of other stuff as well. So I've sort of now got a bit of an understanding of how the political side of government works with the legislative and executive from um, previous work, and now I understand how the administrative side works. So I'm figuring out where all the convict files are and learning how to tweak them. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> and so what are some of the projects you've managed to uh, start off? What are some of the so, things coming down the pipeline? Well, so there's, well, there's that work, and then outside of work, I've also got GovHack. So um, two years ago, I pulled a team together and we kicked GovHack back off. There was one that ran in 2009 by uh, John Orson, who did a great job. So we kicked it off, ran it in two cities two years ago, and then in eight cities last year. So perhaps explain what GovHack is. is. Okay, so this is my personal project, um, and like with some fantastic volunteers. Um, and basically it's getting a whole bunch of geeks together in a number of cities uh -huh. to look at government data, which could be anything from crime statistics to locations of staff through to climate data, you know, lots and lots of different sort of research and government data, and to make cool stuff. So um, it's been, it's really cool because it shows off the hacker culture in Australia. Yep. Uh, yes. There's a lot of open source people getting involved, as you can imagine, so that's getting a lot more government exposed to just different ways of doing things better and, and to the, the culture that drives people to do technical excellence. That's really cool. And that's a nice little segue to what we just had a minute ago. Like I was going to say, yeah. Right? Because our, our keynote a moment ago was uh, OpenStreetMap. And again, it's using data to solve real world problems. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I guess it's a bit of a, a bit of a culture shift, isn't it, in our government yeah. to be able to open up this data and yeah. making it freely available. Well, a lot of people in government and indeed in um, uh, cultural institutions as well, yep. they see the data or the artifacts that they take care of as things that need to be protected. Yes. So it's not that they're trying to do the wrong thing in a lot of cases, but they see their responsibility as protecting the data. The guardians of the data. The guardians <laughs> of the data. Right. And what I'm trying to show people, and, and it's been amazing the shift just in the last couple of years, is that people are starting to realise that actually getting the data out there means other people can use it, other people can start to trust it, yes. other people can contribute meaningfully back to it, and he's come, let's you the gun. Come in the couch. Come in the couch. Come on, Rusty. Come, come on, Rusty. Come, come, come on in. Come on. Come in the couch. We do want you in here. Come on. Next time. We'll get him next time. We'll get him next time. Next time, Rusty. Rusty is too good for us today. Please continue on. So you have um, a lot of fun with um, um, teaching people that actually opening up the data is, is actually a really good way to protect it. Yep. And when government data, which often enough is scientifically, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's collected scientifically, it's well maintained, it's used for really important decision making and stuff. So by opening it up, it becomes an authoritative source too. So people can start to reuse that data for important decision making, which is really cool. So um, yeah, it's, been, it's, it's really fun, it's a really good culture shift and I'm getting to get deep culture and hack culture into government in uh, the best way. So it's really, really fun. I just, I just love the opportunities where this data can be used in ways that people didn't originally envision. Yeah. So that's the, that's the exciting thing for me. Right? Yeah, it's absolutely. like, you know, like, so they may, um, they may have paid for this data to acquire this data for yeah. a certain purpose, yeah. yes. but then all of a sudden it's like, well, if I take this and this and this and put this together, it can be used for some new purpose. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, that's the great stuff. I think that's what we can really contribute. Yeah. Uh, maybe, the, you know, governments might necessarily think of that left field, left field approach. And that's it. A lot of times, multiple departments will actually collect the same data because that's the way they've always done it. Yes. So collecting it once and sharing it means you're getting more consistency of decision making, you get more consistency of data, better quality data. When you open it up so people can start contributing updates to your data, you get better quality data. And a lot of people in Australia don't realise, we there's always work and there's a lot of work that needs to be done yes. in this space, but we have one of the most open democracies in the world. Yes. We actually have the last um, 15 years of contract data of all federal government contracts over the, the cost of $10,000 publicly available to that, yes. right? And um, most countries don't have any contract data or yeah. expenditure data publicly available. Our budget, it's true, it's only available in a PDF that people have to screen scrape to turn into real data. <laughs> sure. right? anyway, but we can solve that. And we're working on that, but to have the budget publicly available at all yes. Is, yes. is rare. So I mean... But also the economic benefit, right? Yeah. Instead, of, instead of all these different departments acquiring the same data yep. in times, yep. we acquire it once. They acquire it once. And we improve yep. it. And improve it. So you, you reduce them the cost of government and the cost of service delivery of government. Yep. But it, so it's actually good for government to open data, but it's also good economically, for the public, for transparency, safety. Right. So I'm having a lot of fun with open data. Um, my job is just awesome fun. Um, I'm getting to do a bunch of cool projects personally. Um, and yeah, life is awesome actually. So yeah. <laughs> and we can't miss the opportunity actually to ask you. Obviously, uh, you've done a little uh, uh, visit recently to another continent. Oh, yes, I have. Do you I want have. to talk briefly about how exciting that was? Where did you go yeah, personally? So first of all, I went to Antarctica, and it was Antarctica. Antarctica. It was wow. an absolute dream. It's something I've wanted to do forever. Um, and, um, and it was cool. Basically, you fly into Argentina and go to the very south of Argentina, get on a boat. 
You then do two and a half to three days of gut-wrenching hell <laughs> where your boat is tilting literally 45 degrees one way to yep. 40 degrees the other way and it's worse. So we're talking almost 90 degree swing. Awful. Um, and But then you spend four days in the most pristine environment you've ever seen, just stunning. I do have something sad though to tell you know um, all of our crew and all of our community and that is that um, we can't do LCA in Antarctica. I'm sorry. Oh, we, we come can't. On. I'm sorry, the only Linux user group down there are Gentoos. Yes, true. And that would just be too painful. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to recompile everything, everything every day. Make our own boats every time. That'd no. be terrible. <laughs> it would be so, yeah. But there were a lot of gentles down there. So. Wow. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, it was amazing. So, humpback whale, Mickey whale, local whale, blue whale, seals, penguins, birds. It was stuck. Absolutely stuck. So, yeah, I had a great time. And I think, to take us back to, to GovHack, that was actually one of the projects that that I think attracted my attention the most was actually the um, tracking of seals using real-time data that was coming through and being projected on a map. That was yeah. an absolutely brilliant little it project that came cool, out of that. Uh, so I mean, there was a whole bunch of environmental kind of projects that came out of it yeah. that, that were really, really cool. There were some economic ones. Uh, one of my favorite projects was a very, very silly one in, in some ways. It was called Deathmatch. So deathmatch.me Deathmatch. is the website. Okay. And uh, they built something that takes um, information about how people die in Australia <laughs> and compare it to each other. So you say, I want to compare sharks to bathtubs. It turns out bathtubs kill more people than sharks. Wow. Yeah, it turns out dogs kill more people than sharks. You know, like, so you start, so I mean, it's, it's a little bit morbid, but it was just a cute way of helping inform people about the reality of how dangerous different things are. Right. Um, there were some projects uh, that, um, you know, did the budget, of course, and, and made that sort of more um, uh, easy for people to interact with. There were some that, um, oh, there were heaps of projects. One of my favorite projects was two years ago, where they took climate data yes. and made laser cut jewelry out of it so that the outer so outer end of the ring was the temperature high and yes. the inner part of the ring was the temperature low of every day for a year. Wow. So huh. then they printed it out, you know, Perth, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, and so and, and for the same cities over different years. So, you know, you take Melbourne is like, you know, really cold and Sydney and you know just hold them over each other, it's really quite beautiful. But they made jewelry out of it as well. Nice. But you know, you can take Melbourne from fifty years ago and Melbourne from today and just get that really tangible tactile Yes. You know, yes. Oh it's really, really Make cool. it real. Completely new ways of looking at things. Yeah, but apparently that you know the fact that we had people looking at climate data made us part of the climate change uh, you know, yeah, we then got flamed by someone telling us that we were politically motivated around, around the climate change believers. And right. It was fun, but that's alright. You're always going to get haters. Haters going to hate. That's doing cool stuff. <laughs> Hey Pia, just yes. thank you for being um, the inspirational person you are. Aww. You know, I love seeing you here at LCA because uh, you just bring us this energy and enthusiasm to the conference. Well, and thank um, you. you know, and you too. And, and, <laughs> and you too. Oh, thank you. I mean, the thing is, coming to LCA is one of the most. It is the week that I look forward to almost more than anything else in the year because you meet so many inspiring people. You get you get to sort of talk about what you're doing a little bit, but more importantly, see what everyone else is doing. It's our reunion, isn't it? It's our reunion. And you see, you get inspiration, you learn about new stuff, you right. see people who are, are, are all commonly bound by some of the basic hacker ethos yes, that yes. drives us all. Right. And it's, yes. it's, it is wonderful. So thank you. It's all wonderful. different, but we're all contributing in different yeah. ways. And we've all got the same spirit, the same yeah, hacker spirit. Yeah, same hacker spirit. And yeah. it's the hacker ethos in Australia that makes it such a great place. So yeah, so I love it. So thank you for doing this. It's great. Fantastic. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, awesome. thank you for coming on the couch. Thank you for coming on the couch. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 We'll shoot off to a little video and if we've got some time we'll try and see if we can come back uh, with potentially another guest in just a few minutes. See you soon.